discuss it a little further. Janice Dean, who lost her both of her in-laws to co um, in, during COVID-19 uh, in care facilities in New York. Janice, my condolences to you. Um, we have not had a chance to discuss this personally, but you know, you see the President Biden there saying that the governor did a hell of a job, and some were saying this was an Emmy award-winning performance today, um, announcing his resignation. Your thoughts on everything that's happened? Well, it's a little bit of justice for my in-laws today. We had a memorial yesterday, the first time we were able to do so. Uh, they died last year in different nursing care facilities in New York, one in March, my, my uh, father-in-law, Mickey, and then his wife two weeks later, just after Easter. And we had a memorial for them yesterday at Mickey's Firehouse that he you know, was at for 23 years of his career. They were true New Yorkers. New, Governor Cuomo likes to call, call himself New York tough, but they were New York tough. Mm. Uh, so today, a little bit of justice, but I do want those investigations to continue. Uh, just like that Democratic lawmaker said, we have a laundry list of scandals that this governor is facing right now, including the nursing homes, the fact that he gave COVID family tests to his friends and family uh, while nursing homes could not get them to test incoming patients, his $5.1 million book deal and the fact that he covered up over 15,000 deaths of elderly in elder care facilities. Yeah, I mean, what you're describing to me, it sounds like it's all about accountability. You know, every time there's a tragedy, I try to put myself in someone else's shoes, in your shoes, to think about the loss that you suffered at, as a, at a result, really, of the governor's negligence, if you think about um, what happened. And so, you know, there's not only that, but there's also these women coming forward and basically saying that that he sexually harassed them now a criminal probe potentially happening here and that's what it took to get this governor to resign I'm very grateful to all of the women that have come forward. I've actually become friends with several of them. Uh, we all had the same goal, and that was to bring this governor down and take away his power uh, because we were all abused by his power. This is not about necessarily sexual harassment. It's about power, making people feel small, demeaned, uh, and and. Quite, quite frankly, they were very scared for their careers and their livelihoods. By going forward, they were so brave. And, you know, the work that I've done on the nursing homes could not have been completed without those brave women that came forward. Mm. And Janice, you know, it's funny because in the Me Too environment, obviously, so much has changed in all different kinds of workplaces, in everybody's office. Um, you know, the governor is a leader here. He should be expected to know what the standards are. And yet still, till today, he was saying, I've been doing this all my life. It's who I am. Well, that's a problem. Mm. He's always made excuses. I've been covering him now for a year and a half. He's blamed everybody else except the person that signed the March 25th order that put infected patients into nursing homes for 46 days. He blamed God and Mother Nature and the New York Post and Fox News and President Trump. And then with the sexual harassment, uh, he blamed the victims. They mm. didn't really know what he was saying. He was joking around. So you know what? It's time for him to take some accountability. And uh, you know what, Governor? It's time for you to go. It breaks my heart because I think about the facilities that we had in New York at that time that were sitting empty where he could yeah. have, you know, made sure that infected people stayed away from people who did not have the virus. And it breaks my heart because this was preventable. Um, Janice, again, we're sorry. And, and it's great to talk to you tonight. Thank you for sharing.